And we'll start off today with a clean, dry, two inch brush. I'll go right into my clear gel, no white today. And I'm gonna just spread this around. Obviously the brush isn't totally clean. The easel probably has some paint on it. So you may see a little bit of muddy color and it'll be fine. That's actually very, very clean. <laughs> there. Now, before we go too far, let's take a look at the paintings that you guys did of my last one. It's always fun to see what you're up to. So do your version of this painting here that I'm doing today and then share it. And if I see it in time, I will get it in the next video. You know what? Let's stop right here and grab some, uh, grab some blue and some red because I have so much purple in this painting. I'm going to go ahead and get a purple that we can work with for the whole painting. Put a little white with it so I can see what, what I've got. Otherwise, no idea. Start right here at the bottom. I'm going to place down some of that and let it blend across. Just a little bit of paint. You don't need a lot of paint. That clear gel will help it to blend. A little more purple. Yeah, that works. Okay. Now, I like that color. Let's keep going with it. How about up in here, maybe? Just anywhere you think you need a little splash of this, throw it in. I've got some dark things going on around here also. Let's take some more of a white, a little bit of blue right into that. Well, that's too much. Let's go right into the purple, just right over that. How far can you take the sky today? Well, you could really take it just about as far as you want to. But for me, for me, I don't know that we need. Let me go back to um, I just grab a clean, clean one inch brush, do a little blending. You know, I, I really don't know that I need to take it a lot further. I see where my moon is going to be right here. You can tell. All right. I like the way that looks, but we don't want to overdo it because this sort of thing you can get carried away pretty quick. And there you go. It's about all you need. Simple. I'm trying to make an easy sky today so we can put a lot of effort into the ocean. So little moon just for the sake of doing it. I'll grab my filbert brush, take some white, tint it with purple so it's not pure white. Not much, they're very, very little paint in that brush, not much. Well, when I say very little, I mean, I've got enough to work with. Sometimes people take that to the extreme. Oh, where do I want my moon? Maybe right about here. It looks like it should be right here. Let's put it right here. I'm gonna just set my brush down and twirl it and bring it out. Isn't that nice? Now let me grab a fan brush and uh, some of our purple. Purple, that'll work. I'm going to create just a little bit of a little bit of an island kind of a thing going on here, or the land mass that comes straight down like this. Kind of interesting. I don't want too much today. I do want it to kind of raise sharply out of the water. This is going to be a fairly close bit of land. This isn't supposed to look super far away. So kind of keep that in mind with the humps, the size of the humps there. As I blend down, I need to grab some black to throw in there to darken it. Grab some black and our purple. There we go. A lot of paint on there, but I don't really have anything else going on in this area, so I should be safe. So I'm just going to start, grab a little of my purple to mix in with my brown and black. So I'm just going to pull. Now, any highlighting that you want to do, I would. I would highly recommend doing it with the liner brush. There's a lot of paint down here and the sky was fairly slippery with all the clear gel. I would just wait and do this with a liner brush for sure. You see, I'm just carving in some of the detail with the side of the brush. That works. Yeah, it definitely works. You don't need, you don't necessarily need it perfect or anything like that. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Just, just a, uh, again, a few, kind of muddle that together so we can't really tell. I don't want to see every last branch, you know, to every last tree. That, that can be too much sometimes. Now we'll go ahead and underpaint the seascape section, the little ocean part. Take some of our purple. Now it's so nice to have it pre-mixed. You don't have to mix it over and over again. I'm just going to brush this in. This is the, my this is my shadow. This is my dark for the seascape. Beautiful color, isn't it? Kind of a kind of a neutral purple. I don't really see it being one side or the other. If I had to pick a side, I guess it's maybe a little bit on the blue side. 
now, right now, of course it's changed, you know, as we've been mixing kind of other amounts of red and blue around it, but right this minute it looks like it's a little bit on the blue side. I think that's pretty, pretty good. Okay, so we've got that in. I'm just gonna, um, actually I'm gonna probably extend that island down, so I don't know if we really need to put much there. But just right up in here, I'm going to lighten it with a little bit of white, not much. And with that little bit lighter color, I'm gonna work it back behind this wave. This is the only part where I'm gonna be careful so I don't disrupt that horizon too much. And I'll just put a little bit of this down in here. This represents some amount of water on the beach. And then we'll kind of need to get some beach colors going over top of this. A little more red even. I'm just gonna paint the whole thing in. And then we'll add some beach colors over it. Now we're gonna direct our attention here to the little island in the background, or the land, and take some brown, black, and some of our purple. Good. And of course we had to stop at the tape line, but now the tape's gone, we can, we can bring it down to the foreground where it belongs, of course. Kind of let it wrap almost around, kind of like that. Cool. Again, it's supposed to kind of look close up. There we go. Let those trees kind of bury into the into the land. If we step back, yeah, see that looks better. Now take um well let's go a little darker. Can we go just a little darker, maybe? Just a little darker. We'll have to take some of that paint off. Obviously, we're gonna take some of the paint off, but let's leave that for now. Well, let's not let's not leave it for now. Let's bring in just uh, bring this trunk over. So it's supposed to be kind of growing out from the side here now that we've got room to work and bring those trees out, hanging into the painting from kind of the side. Who knows where they stop? Maybe we even do some rocks over there, but for the meantime, let's let that sit. Let's come right over here. I need just a little bit of green, some, some yellow ochre, some of our purple, white, some sap green, a little bit of a, not too bright here because this is kind of a moonlit painting. I don't want it too bright, a little more white. Okay, there's just putting in a little bit of this green color. What that does is that begins to um, show the eye of the way. I put a little back there, I didn't want, I was blending that in. Even a little bit right up in here, just a little transparency to what's gonna be a wave, just by brushing it like that. Okay, and then, and then let's blend these two together. Just, I just wipe my brush out, blend them together. You think, well, that certainly doesn't look like a very good eye of the wave. No, I know. <laughs> we'll wait and see what happens. Maybe it'll turn out. You see, it's just the little things that count. You can sometimes just punch that color or, or soften it a little bit, and you really get a, a nice effect quickly. I know it doesn't seem like we're just saying, like, wait, you're, you're, that's where you're going to stop. Well, for, just for this step, let me take a little bit more of our purple. I started to mix it up, but I don't have to. And I want to bring in just a little. More foam coming down. Okay, now, all of that was setting up for the most important part, probably the, the entire painting today, which is taking a blue shop towel. This is better than a cotton, or a, you could use a cotton rag, this is better than a paper towel, is what I was gonna say. I'm gonna start here at the eye of the wave, and I'm going to rub fairly hard and remove all that paint. Put it on, take it off. And <laughs> what's left is just a stain on the canvas. Let's take a little bit of white. Um, you know what, I, I, pure white, maybe we can, just the tiniest 2% red, I don't know, just so it's not pure white. On a detail brush, pulled to a nice sharp point. This is backlit, obviously, so you don't paint it like you would normally. You don't get in here and just, oh, highlight everywhere. Think backlight. So this, just a little bit of that light color there is actually appropriate. I like the shape here, so let's just, um, I was gonna keep it originally a little bit more crown, but I, I like that swoop. I think that's really, really pretty. So let's just touch it right here, soft, soft, soft. And let's just bring in a little glow. I mean, 
faint little glow right there. See that, just touching it, just to give it a little impression of, hey, there's something going on there. I'm not too sure, you know, exactly how it's going, but it's just a little backlight. That's, you don't want to see the whole thing. All right, I've got one, look at this. I got one for light, one for dark. I'm going to take my one for dark and pick up some of that pre-made purple. I actually think there was some black in that, but that's totally fine. Totally fine. And I'm going to use this to bring out my sharp edge underneath because there would be certainly some feeling of oh yeah a little shadow under that wave not not too much over here because it is foaming up against the um oh that's pretty up against the beach there the, the island okay i'm just setting that paint there's very this is um, very, very dry. Very, very dry. I can't mess that up. You know, I pick up a little paint on my finger. See it there? But very little paint. So I, uh, when I put this on, it just doesn't go very far. It kind of sticks. See that? Let's go right here. I just create a couple of, uh, a subtle now because see, we, we got this little, um, this is just kind of left over from the underpainting. I want to accentuate that just a little because we don't want to just leave it a bland underpainting. But I'll tell you the truth, when the underpainting is good, Maybe you should just leave it. I want to just touch it with a little highlight. Again, to increase that backlit look. Now, you see how little paint I'm putting on? Little, little paint. That's the secret, little paint. A little sparkly do right there. Well, that's kind of nice, isn't it? But see, it's that backlight. Think of a, if you've ever painted a silver lining on a cloud, it's so much, very much the same thing. It's pretty. I'm just touching, I mean, just dabbling with this brush to create this look very subtle. And then I wipe the brush out, paper towel, and sort of soften the edge so I don't have any harshness. I, I like that fuzziness so you can see the mist. See the mist? I'm picking up some of that same black and purple mix. Uh, not too much paint, not much paint's necessary. And I, and I just want to come right up under here. You can imagine this would just be kind of the next logical step given kind of how we did that side. Not too much of that. That can run away on you in a hurry. Okay, a little more paint. I didn't wipe quite as much off this side. And you can see how it's behaving a little different. I have to reload a lot more because I didn't wipe it off quite as much. Big difference. Okay. But, you know, that's fine. <laughs> not not going to worry about it. Not going to worry about it. A little more color. Not too much. I want to come up in here. I want to just, boom, hit a a shadow right under there so that you can really mm, it pops it out now it obviously has to be blended but that's something we can do here in a moment okay let me take um well what brush should we use to blend let's use a brand new beautiful clean um quarter inch flat brush because it's so soft so so much of this is precision work today it's not so bold and wild. I, I kind of paint wild sometimes, but not today. There. Ooh, that's nice. See, subtle. Subtle, subtle. Actually, I'm going to blend that in a little more so it's even more subtle. A little quarter inch flat. Get some, get some of our purple in there. And I can just sort of blend all this together. Because, see, I don't want to take all that light up in here and, and ruin that beautiful effect that we've worked. I was going to say we worked hard, but we didn't work that hard on it. <laughs> We work to get it in. There you go. All right. Can I go up in here and just touch with this little purple on that brush? This is the painting of the little things count. There's no one thing here. I just want to get a little, mm, little something right there. There's no one thing on this painting, is there? It's pretty, though. Right in there, somewhere. I found it. It's the color I want right there. What color is it? It's purple. <laughs> That's just all we're using today, purple. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to paint in just a few 
bits of water. Some of this is actually going to be darker water than the sand, which is going to look really cool. And see, I'm just, again, just soft, soft, soft. Everything needs to be soft. That's what's going to make this such a gorgeous painting. It's what's going to give it the, the life, the jumpiness, the pop and impact to it. I want it to have some pop. It's going to be the softness is, is why people are going to be attracted to this painting. Even the sky, I mean, purposely soft. Okay. A little bit more real quick as I wrap this up. There we go. Now I've got a clean quarter inch flat brush. I'm going to take that through some white and just a tiniest bit of red. Again, 2% red and 98% white. And load that to a nice sharp chisel edge where we can really get some nice highlight effects with it. And that's just exactly where we're going to start highlighting right now. Obviously, look how much highlight we put on our wave. Not much. <laughs> so we don't need much down here and it wouldn't take much to overdo. So let's just go slowly. Draw that line in there. Reload. Now, see, I didn't really wipe out the brush, but that's okay. Again, very little paint. If you have too much paint, wipe it off. Then you, you'll be right where I'm, where I am. You can go ahead and just paint this, highlight this exactly like I'm going to highlight it. If you wipe yours off, if you need to, again, but don't, don't uh, struggle. Don't struggle. Whatever you do, don't, don't start glopping it on. And I mean, if you do, it's okay. And you know, you're going to, you're not going to have that softness that we're trying to build in this particular painting. All right, I see this is actually coming along good. I see uh, we do need a little highlight right in this area. We're getting a lot done with the quarter inch brush. If you don't have the quarter inch brush, the detail brush will work just as well. So will the three quarter brush, although your, your ways may be a little bigger, which would be fine. Okay, nice. Be kind of precise with this. Don't just throw it in and say, well, I'll just put it everywhere because because it'll too much will ruin it. Just a little bit. I mean, you've got something to be happy with, but too much will ruin it. I don't want to don't want to go overboard here. I mean, if you do you just one swipe of the blender brush and everything's back to the way it was, but it's always a way to fix it. Now, continuing with the quarter inch flat brush, I'm going to just grab some white and some purple. I love having that with premix purple. That is the way to go. Premix that purple before the painting starts. All right. Somewhere kind of in the mid tone range. Actually, probably could have just grab the color we were using last. If this isn't bright enough, I can brighten it up. But I just want a little you know, time to paint the waves back here. We kind of sort of forgot about them. Not really. I've been. I've been saying, oh, I got to get them in to myself and kind of just put them on the back burner. Doesn't matter. Would it have been easier to come in and paint these waves first before you get into doing the, not really, not really. This is just as easy to go back and paint them in. And I almost always do paint them in last. I've got a little cup here. I recommend using linseed oil and take just, um, well, let's just start with, uh, let's see. How about our highlight purple? This is a, a little to the blue side, and I think that's neat. Now, these palm trees are painted a little small because they grow. They're going to grow by about a third, and I'm going to end up covering some of that moon. But here's, we don't want to get in there and do it all now. Let's, uh, let's do it very kind of slowly. It's not bad, is it? I can't really see it, but because the contrast isn't high. But uh, I mean, you're not really going to get high contrast unless you really sparkle it with white, which we may. There, see how far we're coming out with that? And it just covers the moon. I like that um, because that helps to seat the moon into the painting. Take just some white. I am going to go ahead and just a little bit of that mud. Well, not mud, but a little bit of that grayish now because I touched the black, the grayish uh, blue. So I guess it is mud. Anyway, a little bit of the leftover color. <laughs> Stay focused here. What that does is it just highlights that a little. Pretty, isn't it? You don't have to do every single, every single tree 
doesn't have to be covered in detail, but just some to kind of show. Oh, okay, there's something going on here. It looks a little bit more like a forest of palm trees. See that? I don't know. See, I'm getting kind of mushy over here. That's okay. That busyness is okay. Uh, this dark spot needs help right there. Pull that dark spot out. Okay. I don't know if you could see that or not. It may have just been in person with a reflection of the lights. Okay. That needs to be a little bit bigger. And remember, multiple trees here. Okay. That one needs some. Because he's still kind of left out. All right, get the corner of the brush loaded with some paint. All right, here we go. Just boom, here and there. I'm just going to touch in right there on the corner. I want it to look like a little, little bit of just light hitting. Not much. Wouldn't be much light, but a little bit of light hitting on some of this island foliage. Just as just landmass connected to whatever. We're, I mean, we, we're on an island, I guess. I don't want much, but I do want the feeling of, hey, there is a little bit. Definitely just a little. Obviously, I got a shop house standing by to dabble and to just press that in. That's one of my favorite things to do with a shop towel. Long foliage, just hit it. Boom. And soften it in. See how that softened it right back? Now let me grab just a filbert brush. It doesn't really make any difference what it is. I'm going to take just some pure black on the right there scooped up. It was right in this corner. I feel like, especially as I stood back, because you need to stand back six feet away from your paintings, but I don't want to ruin my highlight. I think the highlight's pretty, but just I need a little shadow. So I've got, just stick some down, and then grab another crumpled up shop towel. Um, you know, you could use a two inch brush, one inch brush, but I'm, I like the idea of removing some of the paint because it's kind of, we don't have a lot of texture in this painting. And we're going to just soften that by touch it, touching it, tapping it. And just touch that tree trunk there just a little. And then right down in here, clean spot of the towel and just soften that right in. Well, that about wraps things up for today. Hopefully you enjoyed seeing this. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs and Brushline. Thanks for watching. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Remember to subscribe if you're not already and click the like button. That helps me out a lot. Stick around, watch a couple more videos and stay inspired. Mm -hmm.